So palliative chemotherapy is chemotherapy given to metastatic cancer patients. It's not intended to cure them. It is intended to prolong their life and ease their symptoms. So the point of the study was to compare a, our sample of metastatic cancer patients to see whether those who were on palliative chemo differed in their outcomes from those who were not on palliative chemo. The outcomes that we looked at were invasive procedures received in the last week of life and also whether they died where the caregiver thought that they would have wanted to die. Other research in, in the past had looked at how patients perceive palliative chemotherapy if they realize that it's curative or not and what the, the intent of palliative chemotherapy is. We wanted to know whether patients who received palliative chemotherapy had different outcomes several months later than those who did not. We found that approximately 56% of people were getting chem palliative chemotherapy about four months before they died. And for those patients who were getting chemotherapy, we found that patients were much more likely to um, undergo cardiopulmonary resuscitation or ventilation in the last week of their life. They were also more likely to die in an intensive care unit or die some, somewhere other than where they really wanted to die. The clinical implications are that oncologists and patients need to need to better understand that the patient is terminally ill. Patients need to acknowledge that the chemotherapy that they're receiving is not intended to cure them, but it's intended to palliate them. And that's the purpose of getting the chemotherapy at that time in their course of their, of their illness. In the future, clinicians can benefit, oncologists can benefit from having data that shows, you know, maybe getting palliative chemotherapy isn't doing what we're hoping it will do. Maybe it isn't prolonging their life, maybe it isn't um, improving and easing their, reducing the symptom burden of patients who are dying. I think it matters to ask patients where they want to die. It's a difficult conversation to have, but one that's necessary because sometimes you don't know. Um, similarly, it's important to know whether patients would want to be put on a ventilator or want to undergo cardiopulmonary resuscitation if they were close to dying. Those are things that often we uh, worry about taking away patients' hope um, if, we, if we ask about it, but in earlier work that we've done, we've found that that isn't the case. So what I've learned is important to ask patients what, what they want and family members, um, and then if, if they do want to avoid being resuscitated or put on a ventilator, you know, to actually get orders in place, get a, a do not resuscitate order in place so that they aren't given more care than they want at the end of their life. What this taught me was not that palliative chemotherapy is futile. I don't believe that at all. Rather, it taught me that while I'm giving chemotherapy, I need to make sure that I understand what my patients want for their end-of-life care and make sure that we set up the things that are necessary so that they can get the care that they want. Patients need to realize that they might, you know, no one has a crystal ball, but their life expectancy is less than six months and that can be fairly accurately determined. If, the, if that's your life expectancy and you have an incurable cancer and you are receiving chemotherapy, that's called palliative chemotherapy. It's intended to prolong your life and ease your symptom burden. It might not do either. It might, in fact, make things worse. So that's the discussion. If patients want that and, and feel like uh, palliative chemotherapy gives them hope or it just shouldn't be false hope, that this is going to cure them. It should be, they should have data like from studies such as this that inform them of what the cost, potential costs are for taking palliative chemotherapy when you're that sick and that advanced in your illness.